Jumbo Punch! Line. <laughs> Alright, so another episode of Fighting for the Punch. This time, I will... I'm still considering what kind of topic I should do for today. I am... Okay. Ah, uh, fuck. Alright, I'll just develop a skit that I've been working on. And this is for one of the... the, the this is for uh, that show I was talking about, that another skit, but uh, this time I don't really mind uh, divulging the details just because it's going to be a while before I show the episode anyway, so. Anyway, so the, the premise will be, the premise is uh, the swastika. <clears throat> so basically, um, I'm thinking of an idea for like a take back the swastika campaign. So the swastika is automatically associated with Nazis, or you know evil or the holocaust that kind of thing so i'm thinking it'd be funny to have like one of those like organization advertisements commercials that are like you know oh let me talk to you for a second let me tell you something about our organization but this time uh there's gonna be like a guy with a blue shirt and it's like a swastika on it and he's gonna be like a skinhead so like like obviously you're already like whoa this guy's a nazi but then he's gonna start like talking to you in a gentle tone and he's gonna say like oh you know uh, you know, the swastika meant this and this and this, because as far as I know, before the Nazis and all that, I think the swastika meant some kind of like unity or something like that. I gotta do research into this, because this still, this will be outside the, this view, but next time maybe I'll bring my laptop so I can do the research, but I don't have it with me at the moment. So, I'm gonna find out exactly what it means, but it was a positive symbol. And I think the reverse swastika, which is in the opposite direction, as far as the pinwheel formation, it also means something totally different. I think something in like the Eastern religions, Hindu or Buddhism, something like that. Because I remember watching, you know, uh, the Da Vinci Code and the swastika. During that presentation at the beginning, he was like showing the symbols and meant this and the symbols meant that. And I think swastika meant something else. It was like on a Buddhist statue or something. And yeah, that's not whatever. <clears throat> Point is, the premise is uh, take back the swastika. That's the name of the skit. I mean, I might change it, but. That's pretty good, I think. So, so the premise already is like an organization that's trying to do something very offensive or ridiculous, but you know they're saying it's for a good cause. So there's the joke right there. But I want this to be like about the same length as a normal thing. So the, the joke is already like deflated. So now I have to make it still funny throughout the entire skit. So ways that this could be funny are so the swastika is a bad symbol, but they're trying to put a positive spin on this. So you have to think of positive ways they can use the swastika in modern day life. So right now we have a t-shirt with the swastika on it and that's already, it's, you know, it's not the, it's the classic white, black, red, which is automatically thought about with Nazis, so that's why he has like a blue or different color, maybe it's like rainbow color, tie-dye color maybe. Just the more colorful the better, you know, this means happiness and all these kind of life stuff. Not evil, murder, the exact opposite. So. That's one idea for the thing, just the visual joke of the shirt can be a joke right there, that's with the swastika. And then once he starts explaining it, that's, uh, you know, further into, you know, clarifying to the audience what exactly the joke is. So then at that point, to get to the end, which will be the, you know, call this number or go to this website kind of thing, I gotta fill it in with other jokes to keep it funny. So like I was saying, you gotta think of positive ways they could spin this, so... What I mentioned before, like, it looks like a pinwheel, so I'm thinking maybe this organization could create, like, swastika pinwheels, so, like, people are having fun with swastikas now, like, it, so I think that's another good joke, and, like, kids with swastikas, pinwheels running around, and having fun, so like that. It, I think, uh, production-wise, it'd be too expensive to think of, like, a, a swastika-shaped uh, merry-go-round, but that would also be a good one, but I don't think I have time for that. Maybe if I could make, like, a model or a sketch of it, like, maybe a design, even, like, to go so far as... Uh, like a pole park designed around the swastika. Like maybe a jungle gym with the shape of a swastika or like steps with the swastikas on the side and the merry-go-round we already have. Um, I think that's like good, so I don't think I can fill it entire. But if it was like a park, the park would be, sh like from the outside view, the park would be shaped like a swastika. So this is like swastika overkill, you know. It's losing its meaning the more you use it is their thought, but also you're using it in positive ways is also their thought. So. Maybe silly t-shirt, I'll put that. Overload in general. Just excess, just, once you'd like beat a, once you have a joke, 
and then like you've already like told the joke, it's it's hard for it to be funny unless it's funny when you keep like you keep be beating the dead horse. There's this joke that Tig Notaro does. I've told my friends about it before, some friend, and basically it's a nine-minute bit about her moving a chair on stage because there's like a stool on stage and she moves it and makes like a squeaky noise and she's like oh that's weird and she moves it back and makes a noise again and she does this like the entire nine minutes just and it's at first it's funny and then it's not funny it's not funny at all it's like flat lines and then she does it for so long like she'll like come away new ways to approach it, which is like not even new ways but just she'll just like she'll have another reason on why to actually I don't even know if she did have another reason why she was moving it but it was more like let me just, like, it's kind of like she was just, she's playing with the audience at that point. She's just like, they don't think she's going to keep doing it because they're not responding to the joke. But the fact that she is keep on going and going, she keeps on beating the dead horse, it becomes hilarious. It goes over the moon as far as, before it was like kind of funny moving and making a noise and commenting on it. But then it flatlined and then it got resurrected somehow. And that's like another thing to do, which is funny. So overkill, I'll put... Um, so it basically loops around as far as like the funniness. It doesn't become funny, then it becomes hilarious, funnier than it was before. Just for the fact that it was overkill and it was like, excessive. Children playing. Maybe a maze? Like I'm thinking of like coloring books or, you know. Just like even when you look at a normal maze, like the, you know, the, the maze design is kind of like can look kind of swastika-ish at times, so maybe swastikas inside like a... Because if we were like harping on the children thing with the pinwheel in the park, just like funness basically, uh, which is not, you don't want to think about Holocaust and children, the same thing, but now they're trying to take it away from them. So, coloring books with swastikas. So, continuing that, let me think. Amazing, maybe like in the, this coloring book, you know, it doesn't have mazes. It has like connect the dots, so connecting the dots. We can maybe, if I have a friend who has kids, maybe use their kids like to connect the dots. Although I don't know if they'd be comfortable with like something, but it's a joke, so I don't even know. Maybe like we'll have a shot of them working on a coloring book, and then like a, the close-up shot of them like with the lines. It can be like somebody's hand, so that way they don't have to show. Anyway, that's a production note. Anyway, maybe they even organize like a swastika day or something like that. They're having fun in the park and that thing I was saying about the thing. So that way there's a reason why there's so many swastikas around. So you can't really think of a way it could fly, like if it was like a helicopter ripcord kind of thing. But possibly a thing if I could figure that out. Yeah, I guess I could just tape a swastika picture on top of one of those normal things you get at the dollar store. So basically one of those like helicopter ripcord things with a swastika on it, so that way, ah, there's swastikas in the air, that's funny, I guess, okay. So I gotta figure out what it means, because that would add another layer to the joke, because if it means something specific, like maybe an object or a noun, a person, place, or thing, you can use that person, place, or thing in the joke, so I have to just research that. Research is important if you're doing like a specific joke, because it's good to be accurate, I mean, it's not necessary for the funniness of the joke, but like, if people know about it, and like, you are being true about that, then when you expand on the truth about it, that just makes it even funnier because you're telling things that are the truth. That's why like a lot of comedy is funny because it's true kind of thing, that the whole saying. So it's funny because it's true. It is true. Just so that makes it funnier just because this is like ridiculous in a way. The the derivatives that come from the truth on what the comedian like their slant, their point of view that puts the slant on the truth, which is what's funny. But like because it's true, it makes it all funny. Like it makes it even more valid, not just like silliness, even though it is. So anyway, other than that, I was okay. I'm thinking maybe this park event and like the goodness of the swastika. So I wanted the finishing joke. I wanted to be was, uh, or at least like the last hint. That way, the last surprise will be. Uh, so like we had the skinhead talking about this this whole time. And at the beginning of the skit, it was going to be him, like, talking to a friend or something. And then, like, you know, like, he doesn't know the camera's there. And he's like, oh, hello. And then he starts talking to the camera. Or maybe just a white background. And then, like, you know, just a guy talking to the thing. But I think the conversation, like, he's having fun and, like, interrupting that thing's always funny. It's like, oh, hello there. Let me tell you about my organization. That's kind of funny. Funnier, I think. So, wait, the, the final joke I was thinking about was that... So, this Take Back the Swasta campaign is supposed to be a positive thing. And it's not supposed to be racist or anything like that, or like secretly anti-Semitic. So I'm thinking that what if it is? So basically, this whole setup was 
that it's not racist and it's not anti-Semitic and all this other stuff. They're not skinheads, they're not Nazis, they're not neo-Nazis, whatever. So I think the joke would be that we'll have these undertones, like maybe throughout there'll be hints and then like the final nail in the coffin will be like, there's all these undertones of like, this is, like maybe even like swastika cookies or something, so that way you bring in ovens, you know, and the whole Nazi <laughs> ovens into that, if that's even, that's like a hint, but that's not really like that kind of thing, but it's not really as obviously offensive if it's just a cookie, so. Unless they were baking Jew cookies, but that's not what they're doing. They're baking swastikas, maybe. So, let me think. Wait, what was I saying? Yeah, the joke is that they really are racist, and so, like, this is just an excuse for them to be out in the open with their swastikas. So, like, you know, trying to think of a way that will be obviously, like, or just, not obviously, it'll be subtle, but, like, the fact, maybe, like, the way the actor, like, expresses himself during, maybe, like, he'll, like, frown at a certain point, like, right at the end of the like, he's happy the whole time, and then, like, maybe, like, somebody walks by who looks Jewish, maybe a yarmulke or something like that, and maybe they'll, like, frown for a second, or maybe, like, during the skit, they will pause, or, like, yeah, scout, scope, or there'll be some kind of, like, negative uh, verbal cue or whatever, or visual cue that, like, shows them that just they're, they're uncomfortable with this person or this Jewish person, whatever. And so, that'll be, like, the hints. Ah, fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So like, okay, there's verbal, there's hints that this person doesn't like Jews or whatever. So like, the very end, there has to be something that's like over the top. And like, maybe like what I say, I think it'd be too much if it was just like at the very end, either just like, so hey everybody, come to the swastika play event or park event, festival, swastika festival, something like that. Maybe swastika festival, and then they're like, bring everybody. And like the very end, right before the cut, right before the cut to black, like the last second, they're like, no Jews. Something like that. They're like, no Jews allowed, or don't, like, everyone come, no Jews. Or <laughs> something like that, I don't know. Uh, no Jews. But maybe if there's another way they could say it, like, another way to say Jewish, but without saying Jewish, or without saying Jew, it'd be like, all religions welcome, except, except for Judaism, maybe. Like, you know, the everything. The thing that you exclude is the thing that you have a problem with, obviously. So maybe if I have a list of all religions welcome, all the following religions welcome, and I would have to do research on what kind of religions, so... But then obviously I would leave out Judaism, so maybe... Maybe even they have it on Saturday, because Orthodox Jews are not supposed to like, come to events, I guess, because the, the Sabbath or something like that. <clears throat> so like maybe that's another reason to have it on Saturday. Maybe like no partially concealing headgear, which would be a yarmulke, right? So, but I mean, it could be like a lot of things, but like it includes yarmulkes, so they don't want to see yarmulkes. Headgear, hair wear, I mean, head wear. So anyway, so maybe like, I think it'd be blunter and obviously more racist if, it, if I was like, uh, the no Jew thing. It's like, no Jews. Like, like he's happy the entire time and in the very last second, even he has a grimace on his face, like, no Jews. Something like that. Hey, come to the swastika festival this Saturday. No Jews. Something like that. Like, it'd be a manufactured close-up cut. So, you know, with the, the obvious. And then cut the black. Huh. Maybe fade to swastika. So fade to swastika black. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, like, one of the events in the, the park thing will be, like, goose-stepping, you know, Nazi-type marching type stuff. So that's just more marching type stuff. Marching, so basically pro-Nazi activities. So I think that's pretty solid as far as like, it's probably gonna be like a 30 second, one minute clip, I mean skit. So all these things I think will fill it up. So we're starting off with like a skinhead with a t-shirt. There's the first joke. And then he's telling you what this campaign is about. Basically, they were trying to put the positive spin back into the swastika. They're trying to take back the swastika, which is called. Or save the swastika, maybe even. Save the swastika festival or take back the swastika. It's going to be take back because save, it's already been lost. So, take back. I'll just put save as looking. Uh, save, they're telling you about the organization. They tell you about this festival that's going on, the swastika festival. Or maybe swastika soiree, maybe. I don't know how to spell soiree. Soiree. This Saturday, Saturday, 
I already mentioned that. And they're talking about all these events, coloring books, mazes, that kind of thing. Uh, pinwheels with kids, other activities, mazes with swastikas, uh, a lot of icons, painted faces with swastikas, painted faces. Just basically festival type stuff with swastikas. And then, you know, no, they talk about the rules at the end, these religions, not safe for Judaism, and then no partially concealing headgear, the yarmulke, and uh, uh, so it's like, so bring everybody, that else, it'll be the end of the clip. And so come this Saturday to the Save the Swastika Festival, uh, at whatever park, maybe like even like at like Himmler Park or something like that, something Jewish, like something German, so maybe Himmler Park. And then the very, very last line is, so bring everybody, you know, cut close, cut close up, grimace face, no Jews, cut the black. So I think that's, that's funny, I think, right there. So I think that's the entire skit, which it'll be like, I'll make it in a few weeks or something, whenever I can, whoever will participate in the skit. But I think it's pretty funny, so I think that's it. That's all it is for this episode. Uh, hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, come back 